record the session. Hey, Rajesh. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's good where to are, see you. Where here. are you? I'm in Boston. Boston? Okay. <laughs> I'm in Nashua. <laughs> wow. Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Hi, Rutuja. Maksad. Hello. Hi, Rash. Hey, where are you now? Maksad? In Berlin. Berlin. Okay. <laughs> yes. Where are you? I'm Boston. Same. In Nashua. Ah, nice. Nice. <laughs> so, oh, you're so in Boston? Yeah, Akshat is also there in Boston. Yeah, then, yeah. I, I know Akshat. Akshat was in SDM. I, I was in IDM. So, oh, okay, okay. Akshat, did you graduate? Yeah, yep, just uh, <laughs> September 2022. Nice. And I guess yeah. Kushbu is also here, right? Like Kushbu is here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I'm graduating in May. <laughs> You're nice. graduating in May. Wow. These are all nice to see you all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Several. You know, and Maksad was at the Asia School of Business. So in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. And I think of, uh, Vedant is joining. Uh, 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 Amrita may join. And uh, Franco said, please record. He, you know, so this is from ASB group. Thank you for writing to me. It was uh, so unexpected and so good. I, yeah. I really it. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. And you've been in my mind for a long time. You know, I keep seeing some of the things that you're doing on, on these links. So, so, okay. So who else? Just turn on your camera so we can see uh, whoever is on. So Sudhir, what, what, what next for you? You're graduating oh. now? No, no, I graduated last year in May. Uh, and then uh, after graduating from uh, the IDM program, I think you know about this. Yeah, right? I know IDM, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, and uh, so I graduated last year in May. Uh, and then I joined Amazon AWS as a senior product manager. Fantastic. And with that, I'm uh, like trying to do a startup as well. So we are like funded from MIT Sandbox and that's oh, okay. still in the initial phase. So which program were you on, Sudhir? Oh, this was back in uh, 2015, I guess. MIT uh, India 2015 program. I guess Kushu. Oh, you came to my house. Yeah, in case. MIT Make in India. One. Yeah, you were in my house you in there. Kerala. Okay, I, so I was there just for a week, so I missed uh, being you, at your uh, house. You did the one week program. I yeah. brought the MIT students for the one month program. They all came to my village and they were all staying in my house. I know, That's I know, I missed that totally, one. <laughs> totally of 25 of them. Yeah. So yeah. I set up the fab lab in my old ancestral home and uh, we were staying all night and day, you know, <laughs> designing and eating, I hired a cook and all that, you know, so, hey, Madhav. Hey, hello. Hi, hi, hi. hi. How are you guys? All good, all good. So, What's up? Sorry, I was just figuring out my internet and stuff. It's been a while since I've used Zoom. <laughs> so it's weird connecting my headset to it. So Sudhir, before you, there was another one of my students who joined IDM. Uh, oh. Yeah, he was also, he came through my, the workshop. He joined uh, MIT IDM program. Can I remember the name? Hi, Rajesh. Hi, hi. Hi, Jay. Okay, hi, Disha. Okay. I think uh, we have quite a lot of us here right now. I think some of uh I have the cameras off, but which I understand. Okay. I know Diksha is in in West Coast, so it's 6 a.m. for her. I'm so glad that she even woke up to join. <laughs> so. Isn't it? It was uh, always good to uh, see people. So, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, hi, Anand. And, uh, great to see, see you. And, uh, 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 uh oh. It's been oh. a while, sir. I know, I know. So, I, I sometimes forget where, uh, who was in my which course and, and such. So, Anand, can you tell me which, totally, which, which... That is totally fine, sir, yes. Uh, actually, I was uh, I attended two workshops, in fact. One was at IIT Delhi, and the other one was like uh, Kalasalingam University. Like, Kalasalingam in, in Tamil Nadu, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, wow. yes, yes, Tamil Nadu, yeah. So, it's, it's been uh, quite a experience. Good. What do you do now? Uh, 
after that i started uh, i tried to start a startup i was working on vehicle safety side uh, unfortunately uh, things didn't go well uh, so like i ended uh, the startup and uh, started working as a design engineer in r&d somewhere yeah. like so my core uh, interest was into r&d and yeah. so yeah ended up uh, doing that so always understand that it is the startups that fail entrepreneur just learns entrepreneur doesn't fail yes, yes. you just go do the next yes, one sir. okay so uh, actually <laughs> uh, the reason i uh, I, I like i thought uh, i lacked some of the you know things that were required so yeah. i thought let me you know uh, reset some nice. things and yes. start from there and rutuja what are you doing nowadays uh, sir i am preparing for a uh, uh, union public service commission examination right is still in ahmedabad uh, yes sir gandhinagar hai gandhinagar okay wonderful Okay, so Aditi, you want to the Aditi is our MC for the for the day, and and she her job is to keep me on schedule. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead. Your mic is off. Okay, so first of all, since we all are from different time zones, so good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, whatever it is for you. And uh, I am Aditi again, your host with Josh for today's event. So this is sort of the alumni meet that we are having, and we called it alumni mentor community meet. So uh, today we have lined up a lot of things. Not much, but a uh, few of the alumni speakers who will be sharing their experiences. a little bit of activities planned for you and moving on to the major part that is actually the alumni experiences the sharing part right so the first alumni speaker i would uh, uh i think khushboo yeah okay cool so our first alumni speaker will be ms khushboo and currently she is a computer science ta at southern methodist university texas usa and previously she has worked in the field of cs in many states in india and in finland too so now let's listen from her directly uh hello everyone and nice meeting you everyone here it's like wonderful to see all the faces like who i met in 2015 2016 and different workshops all gathered here um uh so yeah talking a bit about myself i started uh, my journey like with tech top 2015 uh in kerala uh with lot of people and lot of collaborations between the MIT and the students from India and it was like totally wonderful and transformation experience for me because we went on a field trip uh we learned about identification and have a broader view of the how you see your problem in the real time and talking about like different domain of people understanding their use use cases um and like creating a product with them uh and having a mentor to like teach you and guide you like throughout the journey uh it was a wonderful experience and it has changed my life like in multiple ways um i never dreamed about like going to international conferences and being uh, and being a speaker over there um and uh, now being here and being in the cybersecurity field so it just sort of like opened up a lot of horizons for me that i never knew existed um all because you meet uh, people and they give you an opportunity um they share their experience guidance and support and you always walk away like learning something new uh, from all these ta talented amazing individuals that gather together um and after that uh, i uh, got an opportunity to attend the next workshop in kerala and then in iit delhi and a lot more of them <laughs> uh so every time it was it was a mind blowing experience um after that i came to more of an open source journey i became a mentor myself uh with google summer of code program uh and i had a uh, few mentees under me all over the world um after that i was a speaker and the pycon staff committee in italy and then um stayed in finland worked with the uh, what work with the project under the prime minister for the education and the same goal i started with one of the mit workshop uh, that drive me to work on uh, that hackathon and the project as well 
um, after that, I came into cybersecurity field and I was really passionate about like uh, solving issues um, in that field. And I started my own NGO in India. It's Solidarity of Sisters. Um, uh, so that, that was a pr platform which gave women voice to speak about any sort of like violence they have faced. Um, this was all like very new to me and I talked about my platform in Italy and several other and got like a lot of support uh, from different places. Um, and uh, now I'm doing my master's in cybersecurity, uh, which I want to gain more depth and understanding about. And uh, I participated in a lot of uh, cybersecurity competitions in USA and won the award this year and the last year as well. Uh, so we were placed third in the CCTC and CPTC, that's National Collegiate Cybersecurity Platform uh, one. So yeah, and I'm going forward and learning from everyone still <laughs> and see how the journey goes on. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Wonderful. Thanks, Kushbu. <laughs> yeah, yes. thank you. And oh my God, you yeah. have been gone so far away from those those days we met in, in Trivandrum. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so such a meteoric rise. Okay, wonderful. I was a second year undergrad student in 2015, like just new, uh, and excellent, I had excellent. like no experience and everything. <laughs> yeah, learning is a forever thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh... I think two speakers are still not here. So we are going to move on to our next speaker. I'll call Diksha Dikshit, who is a research engineer at Qualcomm's media R&D group in California, USA. And I would like her to take up the mic now. Your mic is off. Audio, I can't hear. Your, your mic is off. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was uh, I was saying uh, it's nice to see Kushbu here. She was a mentor for me in my boot camp actually in IIT Delhi. So yeah, uh, um, and uh, I, that the IIT Delhi was actually uh, it happened for me on a very uh, very right time uh, because I was in my third year when I attended boot camp, and uh, it improved me in a lot of ways which has been helping me since then uh so uh specifically rajesh pointed out a lot of things uh on behalf of uh, how i communicated my ideas and uh and he sort of made me do my presentations without screen and just like uh engaging with the audience and all of that and uh i have been using the uh, learnings i had uh in my boot camp throughout since uh for presenting my ideas and also like his structure of the presentation itself like how to hook the audience with the story and then go ahead with your idea explain the idea and all of that um uh, specifically from presentation point of view but beyond that like even just interacting with all the people who were there and uh just being able to get out uh, of the mindset of an engineer and think uh, uh from the mindset of a uh uh, of an entrepreneur like how you take the idea from uh just uh the idea to a product uh, uh to a finished product and how to market it actually was something which was very very uh intriguing to me because i was not exposed to any of that before that ever in my life and i uh, and to this day i give that example because um after that i um after my boot camp i went on to do my master's from Virginia Tech for a year and then uh, from University of Maryland and I worked in computer vision and robotics and uh, a lot of uh, uh, my ideas I'm not going to say uh, uh, specifically they were an improvement on the technology itself but they were more about solving problems so there also I used a lot of strategies of identifying what uh, like how we learned doing it in the boot camp like just looking at all the areas you are observing trying to identify the problems and trying to uh, use the existing tools to solve those uh, so uh, so that was my research in University of Med and then after that, I joined uh, Qualcomm as an R&D engineer in uh, the imaging department. Uh, right now, it's it's more researchy. Uh, I'm gonna say like in machine learning and all of that. 
uh, but then again, like uh, the, all the skills I have learned over there have been uh, 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 very, very useful for me. And uh, I have discussed this with Rajesh. I haven't given up on uh, uh, my idea of becoming an entrepreneur, and um, and also my um, in like my interest uh, grew in uh, the um, I'm gonna say the mark not marketing specifically like but the product development side of it as well uh, uh when i was in the boot camp so uh, mba is there on my plate maybe next year so let's see how that goes uh, so yeah uh, that's where i am right now thank you so much extra this is wonderful so 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 nice to hear all the stories okay yeah yeah thank you for your uh, insightful journey right so next move on to the next speaker and we have here madhav nair he is from kerala india and is a design geek game designer and also loves traveling a lot so let's hear from him hello hello hi it's so good to see you all like most of like so many uh, familiar faces from across the workshops uh i don't know uh, i'm madhav uh, yeah like Uh, Aditi just said, "Design geek." Like I became a design geek because of Rajesh's workshop. Uh, so before the workshop, like I was in the workshop in 2013. It was a two-month-long workshop, I think, uh, when yeah, that was part of Rajesh's thesis as well. So uh, it was crazy fun. Like we were in a very uh, small town, a uh, private college where the only, um, you know, the only ambition that people had as an engineer was to get into Infosys because this company. just uh, manufactures people for software companies so uh, that was the goal before the workshop and within those two months we tried so many different things learned so many things and right out of the workshop i was like i need to start a company find a problem try to solve it uh, then we got into uh, you know uh, right in college itself we uh, just just dive head first into starting a company and it failed bad <laughs> and uh, we kind of learned from a, learned a lot from it uh, in like okay so there is a lot of things that like during the process itself over a couple of years we uh, you know while in college itself i got to learn uh, what goes into being uh, you know being a an entrepreneur like finding out uh, a problem that people would actually you know pay money for or actually solving someone's uh, you know something that is already existing but doesn't really do a good job at it so Try that failed, and I was like, okay, there is still a skill gap. Like, I can't do this alone. I can't do this with just one or two kids from my college who can just do it. Or we all have to skill up together. So what we started doing was like inspired from Rajesh's workshop. Uh, we started learning together. We started creating our own communities where each of us will be teaching each other on different things. Like every single you know people from every single branch used to come together and uh, pitch in things that uh, you know. uh they were good at or they were interested in and then we used to call it mutual learning and from that uh you know we started an innovation club you know set up a lab got the college to fund uh, a lab and an incubation center for people, you know kids like me to actually start up companies that helped and uh, after that after my first company failed i went into trying to bring you know building one thing where i could actually make make money out of the only skill set i had that could sell when i while i have no experience was basically designing uh so found like 20 kids in my college who did the same thing and then we just grouped together and started doing branding stuff all across kerala and uh, yeah that inter- turned out in, into a community rather than a company uh with you know people branching out from you know i started uh, meeting people across the you know different states and then finally uh you know it, instead of being a, you know running it as a profit for profit organization it just spread out across and it was great and during that process i got into you know one of the hackathons where in bangalore happened where accidentally some of the people here in this call were there and we didn't know each other back then uh so we all met at this hack, uh, hackathon and then we saw i was surprised by a certain technology which was virtual reality now the metaverse boom that came in uh so with that i was like okay this is the thing where i can do engineering and uh, design at the same time let's do that uh, let's put all of my skills into one thing and then try to pl- try to solve problems using that uh, but that was a bad idea as well because i was just very focused on just trying to solve problems with one 
particular technology rather than figuring out what the problem is and finding the right solution for it. So uh, after that, I was like, okay, let's uh, try something else. Went into research with a government agency for like six months. I uh, like, okay, now I understand how people think and how to, you know, figure out problems, how to get to solutions, how to do the research part of things. And then the next thing that I did not have was process, like how do companies actually function? So I worked with a couple of startups and uh, I worked with uh, an MNC for a couple of years. And then uh, like, okay, so MNCs just have money and they have people and there are too many, too many hierarchies. If you want to get something out, like uh, for someone like me, it would be a lot, a lot harder. If I was directly on the ground, I could just uh, bring it out easily. So left the left. Uh, the MNC and then started another company, uh, which actually went pretty well for a couple of years. Uh, it was a, it was bringing in all like I had uh, met so many good people. Like we all, I just got everyone together. I had a co-founder, and it was called Odin Reality. Uh, we were working on mixed reality technologies. Like before the metaverse boom, we were making our own metaverse back then. Uh, we found out all the problems that could fail, which Facebook is facing right now. Uh, <laughs> And then, wow. uh, I, I, and we know this problem existed way back then. Uh, I mean, uh, and then my, I was like, after a while, we couldn't actually make it work. So we were like, okay, we are running out of funds. Uh, so let's bootstrap. Let's just figure, you know, if someone else already has a problem, let's solve it for them. Uh, so we reached out like randomly. We used to cold mail companies, and then uh, you know, we just figure like do a basic research, and we're like, hey. Hey, we could just, uh, I'll help you fix your pipeline, like engineering pipeline in this way. Uh, why not try this? And finally, uh, you know, Panasonic Japan apparently reached out uh, and they were like, okay, we have one guy in Kerala, we just can you go meet him? And then we met this guy uh, and uh, he was like, okay, we have a problem. It was in the, you know, Panasonic Japan R&D facility. They had a problem which they wanted to solve. And they were ready to put us on. They were like, okay, I have the skill. Like, my team has a skill set to do it. We kind of gave them a solution. And then, you know, it's in the process of patents and stuff right now. And after that, we were like, okay, enough of solving others' problems. Let's solve the problem in the industry that I want to work in. And that's when, uh, you know, uh, you know, the company I'm working with, like, I'm working with Geo right now. Uh, and it's a faction called Geo Tesseract. Uh, one of, uh, you know, some of the, uh, like, some MIT uh, alumni started it. Shitaj, like most of you might, like some of you, at least some of you might know Shitaj Maro. So I work for him right now. He used uh, to teach with a, you. <laughs> yeah, he used to teach with you. And that is also during the workshop. Oh, by the way, Shitaj does not know that I am your student, by the way. <laughs> Even now. Is it? Okay. I haven't told him that yet. <laughs> okay. I haven't told him that yet. <laughs> so uh, currently, so since it, you know, it's geo backed, like we have the resources to actually find and solve the problems ourselves rather than, you know, uh, have a big company make the base structure for us. Now we are building the whole uh, mixed reality ecosystem from the ground up so that, uh, you know, everything that I envisioned or uh, people like me envisioned, you know, what we could do using this uh, technology, whatever problem we had envisioned can be done using the base framework. So it's always like, uh, you know, we are building this platform for problem solvers uh, and at the same time getting it to the consumer. So yeah, like wow. it's been a crazy journey. And even in between, like when uh, we, I was working, like, you know, when we didn't have people who needed the tech, you know, needed the skill set, you know, had the skill set that we needed, uh, we used to create our own communities for it. Uh, you know, just reach out to, you know, there is always startup mission, uh, which was Kerala startup mission was very, you know, help startups grow. And they said, I'll give you a free space. And then you bring people. I brought people and it was not going great. Uh, and then they were like, okay, what software are you teaching? What skill set do you need? I was like, Unity. Okay, reach out to Unity. We reached out to Unity and they were like, okay, we'll give you goodies for free for every event that you'll, uh, you'll start. And then eventually we trained about, we got about a thousand people to start <laughs> you know, get into uh, this technology and Kerala became one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, yeah. other than Bangalore and the metro cities, of course, Kerala is very strong in terms of uh, the domain I'm working in, on as well now. Uh, I mean, like, it's just a matter of just starting the uh, domino and then the ripple effect just goes on, right? So it all wonderful. started with the workshop. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. So, so this, is, this is, so now you're with, uh, you're creating glasses for Geo. 
Yeah. Designing, <laughs> yes. Designing wonderful. Sorry. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Ah, uh, hi, Bhani. Sir, uh, Bhani is also here. Hi, hi. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Aditi, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So initially, uh, from Madhav's journey, what I could learn is entrepreneurship is just falling and growing again. <laughs> So like every time we fall and then we grow and learn from every falling, we need to learn a lot. So, okay. So last, we have a last speaker here and he's uh, Hani Bhagchandani, who is a successful entrepreneur and is the founder of Torchit Electronics that has won several awards and was also featured on Shark Tank season one. So welcoming him to here now. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Rajesh and the team for inviting. Uh, Rajesh, like uh, meeting Rajesh changed my life entirely. Like I got a new idea, I started working, uh, made prototypes uh, on seven day book uh, boot camp hackathon, whatever you say, and uh, my life got changed actually, and. Uh, with with my life i changed uh, like my entire team uh, and blessings everything changed impact on 100000 visual impact lives as well so we we make uh, innovative assistive aids for persons with disability we started with a sarthi product many of you might have seen this product in uh, blind people's hand or in any award or something so this is our product, a flagship product. And currently it is used by more than 100,000 blind person on day-to-day -day basis in 30 plus countries. Apart from this, we have uh, other three new products for other disabilities like locomotive disability, hearing impaired. Uh, and also we are now developing something for cerebral palsy. And many of... Uh, you might have seen Shark Tank where I was featuring about the smart eye glasses. So this uh, smart eye glasses, one of my uh, dream project, which I, I, I am doing research uh, since 2019, 2018 and up upgradation of the Sarthi device, our current version. So luckily within next uh, three to four months, it will be getting launched. Wow. And uh, we, we have more than... Uh, 2000 pre orders for that lot of government uh, contracts for that as well are, are in place uh, the main part we are tortured which we uh, which which makes a difference is the affordability the similar products if you see in the market like uh, say example this uh, device which is a sonar based device similar device you find in the US market roughly around $380 to $1,500. And what we are bringing the price point is only $35, $40. So almost one tenth of uh, the cheapest device. So this is one of our key fundamental attach, like making assistive technology affordable for each and everyone. And 90% of the population can't uh, afford the available products are based in US or the Europe. Majorly 90% of the population are coming from lower income groups, so they cannot get in basic health infrastructure. So that's why they become majorly a person with disability. And for them, we have to make innovations which are affordable. Apart from this, we, we teach Python to visually impaired person as a just my one of my hobby. And I'm happy to share like in last three months, we have started teaching Python to visually impaired persons and uh, the batch is very sm small, 20 people team. And out of 20 people, seven people already got placed. So wow. yeah. And uh, uh, Arun Mehta is a key mentor uh, for this Python. Arun Mehta who has designed a software for one of the genius scientists, uh, Stephen Hawking. And he's from IIT Delhi grade. So he's a key mentor and uh, and in next one month, we are also going to open our foundation and our mission to impact uh, or or I can say like mission to get 10,000 people got employability in Python and IT field in next one or two years. So, yeah. Fantastic. 
friend. So when uh, when I met uh, Honey, he was in the first year engineering in uh, second year second year in in Ahmedabad. So our yes. workshop, I was running this workshop called uh, Learning, you know, enabling toys, trying to create assistive devices for for the you know any kind of disabled people, and we took all my students to a school for the blind and we came back and said how do blind people navigate things and we came up with this whole concept of creating a torchlight for the blind and we actually created one in the class his team created exactly. took out a took out an old everyday bat flashlight and took out all the things put arduinos and all these kind of things and and i still had it at home by the way in my old and then he went out and started a company and he, I saw you got the President's Award, Prime Minister's Award. I saw a picture with, uh, you know, Israeli Prime Minister and all that, you know, and uh, and on uh, Shark Tank, fantastic news. You know? Great, great. Oh, that's great, Jenny. I remember visiting Kanthari. Uh, yes, yeah. In Kerala. In Kerala, the Kerala School for the Blind, yeah. Even my first project was about cerebral palsy uh, when we visited the other center in Kerala. Yeah. So Aditi, go ahead. Now, I think I'll... Yeah, so from his journey, I learned entrepreneurship is more about serving others rather than just seeking for money or something like that. Yeah, cool. So uh, I would say uh, that was really great listening to your experiences and your journeys from Rajesh sir's workshop to here where you are right now. And now here's the time to call Rajesh sir over here. Uh, as we all know, who is highly dedicated onto the mission to help kids turn from zero to entrepreneurs. So without further ado, let's have him for the presentation. So, so you know, for the last 10 years, uh, uh, actually since 2006, now it's almost uh, 17 years or something like that, uh, I've been working in this space, running uh, TechTop as a nonprofit uh, in India. Then when I started at MIT, uh, this became my thesis. Uh, on how to change people's thinking and, and such. So ran more than 100 workshops all around. Uh, now the question is, I, I want to make this into a uh, global uh, movement. And the reason I called you all to see how do we even get to that point. So I'll just share of, of my current program. So my goal is to create a million innovators and entrepreneurs across the world right now you know and the question is how do we do that and this is basically based on my past 10 years of research at uh, uh, MIT and ASB uh, Mark Sart is here he was doing his MBA at uh, ASB you know a few years back uh, we did a lot of these kind of programs and and question is uh, how do we reach how do you kind of start to make this movement across the world uh, so today you know, in education, we are seeing what I call the great dropout coming. Great dropout is because during COVID, kids did not have classes. They, they did not have devices, connectivity, and all such, such things. So they did not learn. They got pushed up to the next grade. And when they got to the next grade, they did not know the basics. So now they, they are trying to learn higher concepts without learning the basics. They got disengaged, and students are dropping out. So this is from my local newspaper, which said from 2019 to 2020, uh, number of students who are failing in one or more subjects went up by 12.5 times. Okay. Uh, this is in New York Times, which said last two decades of education in learning and in math and has been cleared out. You know, it's kind of, and dropping dropouts or chronic absenteeism at New York City, you now 41% of the students not coming to school. Okay, and uh, levels of, you know, in states, Connecticut at 24%, Vegas at 40%. And this is the kind of level of problems that you're seeing in the US. This is the place with all the devices and connectivity. Now imagine in other parts of the world, okay. Uh, this is the learning curve during a year. This is a McKinsey study. During COVID, they, they lost five months of learning by 2021. Then it was 22, and now we are at 23. Uh, especially kids from poorer communities, they were already about several months behind in their learning. And during COVID, they were almost by 21, they were almost a year behind in their learning. 
22 now we are about two years behind in their learning. Uh, dropouts, absenteeism had doubled by 2021. Uh, so question is, how do you address this problem? And we cannot go back and teach them all the past curricula. You know, they, it's two, three years of curricula. And the, and the learning is always cumulative. So you cannot go back and fill in with, with uh, you know, what, if you don't know previous years, it's hard to learn the next years. And these are the kids who are going to come out into uh, job, you know, into employment you know, or workforce next, in, very soon. And this is going to impact a lot of other things, you know. So the way to address this is to create, how do we create, you know, build creativity, critical thinking and problem solving and self-learning skills. And trying to take a different path and building competency rather than curriculum. And the interesting thing is, do you need uh, school to make them into innovators and entrepreneurs? And this has been my research for the 10 years. And I believe, no, you don't even know, you can actually almost circumvent school if school is not engaging them, but you can still make them into, uh, build their inner confidence and inner abilities to do this. So question is, are entrepreneurs born or made? Everyone has a dormant entrepreneur in them, everyone. Some of them aspire, put their hand up. So, you know, some of them start their first company, some of them become experienced company uh, entrepreneurs. Current entrepreneurship program primarily pick up only those who put, put their hand up and then train them to become experienced entrepreneurs. In reality, that only forms about two, three percent. And all our effort right now in entrepreneurship is spent in converting the three percent into one percent, while we are missing out on the the large percentage of people. You know, uh, so the question is, how do you transform the ninety-seven percent that we are missing out? Uh, to how do you build their confidence, their learning skills, and 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 creativity? Uh, to make them into entrepreneurs. And that is primary work. And you may have seen my, the framework primarily is in how do you for, take them from zero to first make them into makers, uh, where you build your creativity, your curiosity, their confidence, self-learning skills. So I used to go run these program for school kids in you know different parts of the world. This is in Kuala Lumpur, I think, uh, this, is my, this is in 2015 or something like that. Maybe we just about had started uh, for, uh, ASB, where it brought school kids and taught them design, coding, all these kind of things. I think you all went through this exactly the same stuff. Okay, so you know these are 13, 15 year old kids uh, in Kuala Lumpur making messaging wand with a bunch of LEDs. You know, or in Kuala, you know, Ho Chi Minh City, sixth graders trying to make this robot that kicks a ball and goalposts that scores goals. Everything that you see there was done in two days including the 3D printed ball and the boot and everything else. Uh, so the next stage is to teach them how to solve problems. Again, many of you went through the same thing. We went out to find problems, create solutions and such. And next is how do you make them into entrepreneurs? Once you know what the opportunity is, how do you build them, uh, extract value? Uh, they're all systems thinkers, maker things within the techie stuff, mechanical, electrical, et cetera, and innovator things within the problem system where who's the problem, what's the problem, who creates, who suffers, what's the value, pain, and et cetera. And entrepreneur thinks within the business system of how do you convert the problem into an opportunity and how do you reach customers and such. Current entrepreneurship programs start here. Uh, my thesis is that if you start here, you can reach children and build them up about 10 years before they even recognize they had the abilities. So primary thing is I want the students to fail. Keep taking them outside the comfort zone, make them fail, then make them debug their own failure and build the confidence to debug anything, you know. So when maker hacks things, innovator hacks problems, entrepreneur hacks opportunities. If you have enough of them, you can create big, an ecosystem, okay. So that's a general thing. So by the time I taught college students, I, I started my thesis and I think all of you were in college when I was teaching. Uh, I believe it was too late. The, the world has already had done its damage on you, the school system. And so my focus went back to school, school students. So a STEM lab primarily was going into places, uh, in, you know, in the villages and, and asking children to bring trash and we were designing all kinds of things with it, you know, those in Jakarta and all that. Uh, mini lab was to, to study, I think, uh, Rutuja rumors this, I think uh, in, in Ahmedabad, when we went into villages to 
gave young adults motors and wheels and asked them to create a robot, but make it with children in the, the farming villages to play football, you know. So this is just with switches. There's no electronics in this. Okay, they had to make this. The first time they were soldering things and, and such. Uh, this uh, village school adopted it and made it into a obstacle course for attracting kids, getting kids into these kind of things. And the biggest impact I felt was for girls, because girls grow up hearing a thousand times that, that these are only for boys. And at some age, they start to believe it. And once they believe it, then you cannot, can, it's very difficult to take them out and say, no, you can do this. So the way to deal with this is to reach them much younger and show them that they can do it, build their confidence in, in these things. Uh, so the last stage was, uh, this is at a ASB, we created a, a maker lab in a box. This is, you know, 3D printer electronics, all kinds of things in a box. And we created multiple boxes. And Maksat, you remember this place uh, very well. Uh, so we ran experiments in rural government schools, 10 in Malaysia on the border with Thailand, and uh, seven in India outside Mysore in the, in the farming villages, uh, where we brought 10 to six students to teachers, taught them these things, gave them the lab, asked them to take it back to their school, play with it, and come back and show what you have created in six months. Uh, this is in Malaysia. These are 13 and 14 year old children. Most of them did not speak English. Uh, the first day of the workshop, their first job was to assemble their own 3D printers, which came as a kit from China. And you know, it was interesting to see these kids you know, looking at screwdriver to which way to hold the screwdriver. And you had to tie teeth them, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey, you know, like you know, which way to turn a screwdriver, then learn CAD. Uh, then design something silly, simple, you know, name tag or something like that, and print before lunch on day one. And when I tell adults, they cannot believe this, but children had no problem doing it, you know. And uh, in India, it was harder because these children had not touched a computer. The schools did not have computers. So we had to start with this is a mouse and this is where you type uh, Google. And we started with that. And what we realized is that these kids could just be, you know, first application that they learned on a on CAD or on a computer was CAD, and second application was Arduino and coding. 13, 14 year old children, you know, none of them spoke English. I think, uh, you know, I think uh, you'll see Amruta somewhere here in the in the picture. Of, you know, she she's from uh, ASB. Uh, she also came and uh, worked with this just to study the contrast. I uh, did this workshop at Philips Exeter Academy. This is one of the richest schools here. Mark Zuckerberg studied here, feeder school to Harvard, and eighty thousand US dollars a year education, you know, fee. Uh, so, uh, what I found is that there is absolutely no difference between these kids anywhere. You know, exactly the same program was I ran the same program here, and I found that children are equally intelligent anywhere you go. But it is what you feed them, what you expose them to, makes all the difference in their life. So, uh, so the idea was studying their learning agility, the way they learn how to, you know. Then, uh, then the next thing was to study how they engage in a social engagement, innovation skills, entrepreneurship thinking. And when you look at all these things, you realize that there is no difference between all these children and entrepreneurs can be created. Okay, so now the question is, if I want to reach a million, this is where I need your help. How do you scale it? Only way to scale it is by creating ecosystems. Ecosystems primarily consist of three parts. A center, which is a lab and materials and facility space, et cetera. A community of students and teachers and mentors and such. And most importantly, a culture of innovation and culture of support. Uh, you need to build the first one to build the second one to build the third one. And this thing takes a long time. So now my primary work is doing all these things. This, I think, uh, uh, this is in uh, uh, you know, Madhav's school. And I don't know if his picture is anywhere here. This is in 2013. And I ran the program in this college uh, with 50 students. In this picture, Madhav is not here. All his classmates are here. This is about 23 of the 50 students are here of which all these kids started their companies. Out of the 50, 24 of them did their first startup, okay, uh, in Madhav's school, college. Uh, 
this became their, I don't know if you remember this place now, you know, with their little entrepreneurship center that they set up. Uh, similarly, in, in, in uh, uh, Malaysia, these kids in nine, 10 schools, they built their own. After nine months, when we went back, they were actually designing and creating all these things. And these kids in India who had not touched a computer, with them, after six months, they came back with IoT devices and Bluetooth controlled robots and things. So we had to give them computers and then they didn't have internet. We had to ask teachers to use their phone as hotspots and, and, so, and they were actually doing exactly the same thing. This is the Minister of Education of East Timor, Timor-Leste, and this is a lab I set up with UNDP, where I brought young adults, taught them these things, took them out into farms and fields, and now they are actually going out and teaching school kids. Okay, so uh, during COVID, I was teaching this on online. So I send out kits of materials to students sitting across India, and I did it in NID, and National Institute of Design, in, uh, and, and IIT and such. Uh, now we are doing this. This is online, Cape Town uh, for school kids. I, this is me sitting in this chair. Actually, in May, I'm going to Cape Town to run a program there. Uh, the Fitchburg. Now my focus is on uh, poorer communities. How do you, you know, get to these communities and start to change these children very early on before they get into the wrong track? Uh, this in Richmond, California, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, where these kids are, again, most from really poor communities. Isabella, I just came back from Isabella yesterday, Puerto Rico. I was right, went back to run the program all over again. Uh, these places, so maybe ran about a hundred or so workshops around the world. Uh, built these ecosystems in these places. Uh, so the need of the hour is how do we reach these children in school and create experiential courses? Uh, so I built these zero to maker and zero to entrepreneur as courses where you bring in white belts, teach them to, you know, yellow and orange in making creativity builders and such. Then innovator program to build their, you know, how do you use empathy, problem finding, crit critical thinking, and entrepreneurship phase where they, you know, opportunity sensing business models and finance and all these kind of stuff. It just got approved by Department of Education of New Hampshire as a course that any high school student can take for, you know, online or whatever, for credit. Uh, we want to build portfolio of uh, a student. We want to help build a community. This is where I want to, I need your help. Uh, and build personal portfolio of these children so they can apply to colleges and look for jobs with all the projects that they have created. We are just scaling it in India right now with a company called I30, uh, reaching about 100 schools, uh, hopefully this year, maybe 10,000, 20,000 kids. Uh, so building in the ecosystem primarily you need to take a few kids train them in these things teach them how to mentor uh, the and they slowly have to start to create the ecosystem to build this you know jobs and higher education and such uh, also want to train college students and use the college students to reach the school students like i did in east timor uh, so closing we are leaving millions of kids uh, without giving them an opportunity and creating the ecosystem is the primary mode of changing very early on. And early intervention is absolutely critical. We need to reach them when they're 10 years old, 11, you know, at that age to build their confidence. So this is what I really want to do. We want to create a mentor program across the world, uh, primarily create a platform, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship community platform of, which is, uh, you know, when I'm we're working with children in, in US or India or South Africa or wherever, we want them to have, because they don't have a community locally who can support them in their innovation and entrepreneurship thinking. So we want to create an online community where they can come and get help from others and, and such. Uh, second is we want to find committed people who want to be mentors. It's all, all online, okay? Uh, so... Uh, students in India, while they're working on, they need help. Who can come online and help them with these kind of stuff, uh, and help students anywhere in the world, you know, and to learn design, STEM, and fabrication, build their confidence, build their. How do you help them live up to their full potential? You know, we kind of lose most of it, you know, and I need to. Uh, we want to do a little ideation session 
because I know you all come from different uh, points of view. And I want to do this exercise on Miro. Uh, can you share the Miro link, Aditi, on, on chat? So yeah, you can click on it. And, the, yeah. You can click on it and you can all come on to this. And I'd like you to, this is a open uh, uh, discussion. Anyone can open up, you know, and, and think. So what you could do is let, you let me share my screen so you can see if, uh, uh, a new share. Okay, uh, I'll change it to this, uh, not this. Yeah. Okay, I need to close this. I'll create so that you can all see what we are trying to do here. Miro board, where's Miro? Okay. Okay. So what I'd like to do is, can we think of ideas? Doesn't matter if you don't try to edit your ideas. Okay, just even the craziest, rawest ideas on how to build this platform. And I'd like you to say, take a sticky note, you know, and you know, and type in whatever you want to type in, or you can say it out, and we someone we can create the sticky note. So we want to create a, uh, you know, whole bunch of ideas on on table or, or on the screen. So the the goal for you is, how do we build this uh, online ecosystem of online ecosystem and a community of mentors online? to train a million kids. Any thoughts you have, please share. And you can actually type it in yourself. Say it out loud so we can all hear you first uh, and then go from there. Anyone, just open up your mic and say it. So the for, for the... Uh -huh. What what if we create some videos at least for the basic skill set that is that is needed, like minimal videos with a lot, like a basic library of videos and documents where you know any student can refer. Fantastic. Okay. Do you want me to type it in? Or oh I'm I'm typing it in. Okay, good, good, good. Otherwise, if you have any ideas, just if you can't type it in, just tell me and I will type it in for you. Yeah, I was thinking of like something where uh, kids can meet of any level and background so they can connect, learn and grow uh, something which is like um, a, a student can create a chapter in his college or like in a school and there can be like someone who is good at it can be a leader and then sort of like grow the community from there. Okay. Doesn't okay. matter school or the university. So the, put grow local communities, help them create uh, local communities. Yeah, like we have Google developers group, but it's more like for uh, technology. There is no hands-on over there, but something like that. Okay. Uh, building on the same idea, uh, given that like if we will have these sort of videos, right, we can uh, have some sort of comment section or just open source chat section over there so that like if... Uh, multiple people are actually uh, uh, learning from the same video. They might be facing the same problem. So even the students can help each other mm -hmm. out. Okay. So it's more like a FAQ, but live. Or yeah, it's, it's more like Arduino <laughs> open source community where yeah. like everyone is pretty much facing the same problem. So somebody has found a solution and then other people, when whenever they come to that, they can use it basically. Okay. Thanks, Disha. Disha. Okay. Speak up. I know right now most of us are uh, most are in India, uh, and this is going beyond India. Okay, this has to go beyond India. So, uh, but I I don't think any of these ideas are limited to India, anyways. So yeah, I have an idea. Um, yeah, go ahead, Maksa. Like. Um, it is very common for children to do something outside of their regular curriculum during summertime. So uh, parents send them to summer schools or like to some uh, camps or whatever. And I think this is a perfect opportunity when the students are like a, with, with the school students are not uh, limited with their current curriculum. They have a lot of free time. So maybe we could partner with them as well and uh, use it as uh, one of the platforms. 
Okay. So after school and summer camps. Okay. And another idea is, well, we have this chat GPT, right? Which is a huge accelerator, which can close the skill gaps that uh, I think Hani was talking about, or I, I yeah. don't remember who, that yeah, now yeah. You, you don't need to know how to code uh, complicated stuff, right? You can just ask chat GPT and the tech skills are becoming commodity if you know how to solve a problem. This could I be very powerful. I tried that. It was, it was amazing. I just you know, tried the, for Arduino, write a code to do this and boom, it was just, Putting out everything with comments. Okay. Exactly. Now, now what's becoming what's becoming of a value is actually identifying the problem, empathy, and uh, and solving the problem. Right. Tech skills is something that machine can do for you. Like you don't need to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a human skill. Empathy is a human skill that is missing. You know what you're saying. Tech skills, uh, computers can do. It, uh, GPT can do, but uh, human skill is what is missing. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. And I think we need a community leader for the mentors, uh, like having regular engagements, even this meeting, like seeing all of this brilliant people here with so much experience and the actual anecdotal effect, the long-term effect of the programs, this is very inspiring. But to keep the momentum, we need uh, like a proper ownership of someone who would bring together all of these people and to have them keep them engaged. It's very easy to lose uh, the energy as we go in time. Yeah. And and so for, for that, we've, uh, we want to create this uh, community on uh, uh, Discord, you know, and that that is one of the things that we want to build on uh, the, the, the Discord as a platform. So we will actually talk about that. So other yeah, ideas. Adding on to yeah, adding on to the Discord thing, like we can probably. Uh, you know, there are bots which can we can just track the progress of students. Like, let's say they are making something or adding something or being engaged, like engaging in it, they get points for it. So we can sort of have a leaderboard of sorts where you know, uh, uh, you show that you know there is a belt system that you could try. Uh, where you know we can just progress students in terms of the belt depending on how much they are making, what they are doing. Mm. In that sense. And uh, we can also try to onboard the universities themselves into coming into this. Okay. Well, uh, you want me to type it in, or you are you already entering it? I am in. Okay. I think I can. So Jay, are you there? I know your mic is on. Yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you wanted to say something? I saw you turned on your mic. Yeah, yeah, so actually, uh, I want to say that like, like uh, we can build this some kind of board because like uh, as I walk with you in the school department, schools and uh, to the mentor the students and and then I'm like doing a workshop for students. So like, like I, I uh, think a student has a lack of the knowledge of resources. So like, like uh, what, what I, I observe in my workshops, like uh, when I introduce a student about uh, some project or some some workshop about a uh, your kind of stuff. Of stuff they know how to work on that. They know like the how we can do for the process, process and we can make a further stuff. stuff. But, but they, they don't, don't know, know how, how easy tool, tool we can use to make, to make it a more easy process and to move make it more faster. faster. They take a long route and because of that, and they at the end they come to know that we can make this in you know one day also, uh, rather taking a one week for the same thing also. So they don't know how to make it. So most of the time in a workshop and kind of stuff, they always ask for the resources. So mm -hmm. resources kind of stuff where they can do a work easily and they can learn more faster. Okay. I, I I want to know more about what you do. I want to catch catch up with you after this. It looks like you are also doing something in this direction. No. So there are yes. any thoughts? Uh, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, for empathy, uh, I think that uh, uh, a story, small short stories uh, can help uh, students to empathize more. Like uh, in uh, where I stay, the world of religion is uh, very much in the area that I stay. And uh, for small kids, every religion sect has uh, some of the uh, uh, one day uh, where uh, people, uh, they, they take uh, small kids and they teach small stories and uh, like how to behave and everything. So I see that uh, they uh, they are empathizing more uh, where uh, in compared to other kids. Okay. So th I think that's a, that's a 
good point let me i don't know what i did here okay Uh, uh, Rajesh, uh, yeah. I had in, like a thought of something. I was thinking that why don't we uh, bring parents on board? As in uh, nowadays, the parents are like cool, so they also uh, you know attend uh, the workshop, like our makers workshop. I'm sure they would also love it, and just uh, think of it as in uh, more making Arduino uh, toy or. Solving some problem together. So the ah. reason I uh, you know uh, thought of it was like uh, we can make mentors. Like for example, uh, Madhu can be a mentor. Mentor. I can be uh, you know I can also come up with as in okay, take me as a mentor. Or but the nearest mentor a kid can have yeah yeah is their exactly yeah. Uh, so if they know the basic stuff uh, which is required for the uh, you know the kickstart, it would be a great thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a wonderful no, no, parents as mentors. Yeah, something, yeah. I, I, so something like that. Okay, that's anyone else? So there. Ah, uh, sure. So this is more coming from a uh, other program which is called Jagriti Yatra in India. It's like a eight thousand kilometer entrepreneurship journey. So where, what they do is they create like a local leader. So if you have uh, someone, let's say in Kerala, and you have alums there in Kerala, they can take responsibility of, let's say, whatever the school is close by to them. And they can probably go there and create like a workshop or something. Hmm. So I'm just typing in quickly, for, just so we won't forget. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, how do you identify local leaders who can run programs uh, in their own regions? So these can be uh, either the alums of uh, MIT mm -hmm. Tech or uh, like other people who are interested in doing this. Like there are makers as well, which might be interested in doing this. Okay. Okay. So for example, I'm in Boston. So if there's a school in Boston in which you want to go and do a workshop or something, I'll be happy to do it. Oh, yeah. I, I believe me, I may I may pull you up on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. so there is one more thing which I learned. Uh, that it's more. Uh, I understand all the tools we learned. Uh, at that time. Uh, as an Arduino fab and everything, but I um in my own university, University of Maryland has its own hackathon. It's called Technica. So for that, I designed a workshop in which I was using smaller tools in AI to teach the students how to play with data, basically. So uh, and then they were just trying to identify patterns in bicycle use data, and then pretty much the same thing just try to identify where the problem is so they identified that uh, at certain times of the day the times square uh, city bike station was getting flooded with incoming bikes there was no outgoing from there stuff like that so mm -hmm. uh, i'm uh, like that but the process was exactly the same of what we did in our workshop it just the tools were a little different so uh, this is coming from more uh, the us uh, college uh, 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 ecosystem because because each of these colleges usually have these uh, reach out programs because the technica thing which university of maryland has is to enable women uh, to come into sciences basically to uh, give them an introduction to what all tools are out there uh, what all inter interesting stuff, stuff is going on uh, in the university so come and join um stem basically it's more on that mm. side but then again like but just the idea of how this workshop can be conducted in a way where uh uh they learn how to identify problems and then come up with a solution is itself is the enabler so that can be propagated to uh, or if if we can find representation in uh, all of these uh, hackathons which are already established in these universities universities or science fairs in schools and stuff like that and uh, just teach the way of thinking even that would be really helpful wow I, I, 
I'm trying to see how how that that's a lot of things that you said there that have was, was such high value. I'm trying to break it up into a few concepts there. Uh, can you just put them in 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 text? Uh, Diksha? Yeah, so, I can. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, on yes. those, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, notes, think, yeah. Yeah. Cool. There's a lot of interesting ideas here. Uh, anyone else? Thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking that partnering with the uh, capital providers is a good idea here. I understand that maybe it's not the target group, 10, 12 years old, uh, but while these uh, children will grow up and in five, six years, if the VC or a, or an investor becomes top of mind, I think it's a, it's already a good value, right? If it's someone who knows uh, what to do, who has the skills, mm. um, it could be something interesting for them to provide because eventually we would need some capital if we if we want this to succeed. Okay. So this is uh, I know this we uh, it's been an hour and uh, uh, the, you know my, my couple of. Uh, uh, ask to you is one is uh, how do we create a group where we can discuss this continue this discussion of and uh, you know maybe uh, if there is a uh, you know discord group that we can pull ourselves in or whatsapp group that we can pull ourselves in to continue this discussion and uh, I, because I, there is Second is, we pick Discord as the platform for bringing children on board so that uh, they could actually have all the interaction with mentors. Uh, uh, that's the platform we picked because maybe we didn't know any better. Uh, but I, I, uh, uh, how do we use this, uh, you know, in in uh, in places where they may or may not have access to these kind of apps or and such, you know, because I know kids may or may not get into these kind of apps, but those are discussions that we need to have. But I'm, primarily, I want to have this group to continue this discussion to build this uh, further. And uh, if if we were to create a, is there a way to, how do we, maybe if we can give up uh, uh, your WhatsApp number or, you know, or maybe we'll just email, we have all the contacts. Aditi, have you, Taken note of all the folks who are here, so we can contact them directly, and uh, yes, yes. start to create the uh, a group to have, go go ahead with this uh, discussion anymore because it's already we set up for an hour and it's already passed for an hour. So, any any other thoughts? Okay, Sudhir has already. Uh, sir, uh, I just want to share one thing. Uh, yeah. So, a different area would have different kind of people. So, for example, in Ahmedabad, where I live, the society in the in that society, the kids uh, knew to make uh, uh, the apps and the coding work and everything. But where uh, now I live in Gandhinagar, the uh, here uh, the community is a closed community. And the kids hmm. here, uh, they uh, they all know the plumbing work and the fixing work of uh, homes and everything. So making, uh, so the community is such type that they uh, they never call somebody specialist or plumbers to fix their uh, thing at home. Hmm. But they do by themselves and even the kids uh, know it. While that's not the same case, that may not be the same case in Ahmedabad. Oh, okay. So, uh, Rituja, this, this is wonderful to hear from you after I you know in a long time, and I you have some insights uh, that I think are, are very interesting. I I'd like like to pick this up as we go. Uh, the, and uh, hopefully, ah, uh, there is Jay. Finally, he's, I can see him. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, we sh just shared a. a zero to zero to entrepreneur discord link uh this link is a is for you know for for you if you came in as mentors we want to add children uh so this is a very you know protected link so we want to only get people who want to be there and you know and such uh so please i'd love to invite you all to join and 
we can have some discussions on on discord and then i want to start to slowly bring children so you can start to help them uh, from different parts of the world of uh, you know so of course since you are working with children we want to make sure that everything is open you know we'll have our names our names open because we don't want to have some crazy names and and such so uh again we are all do, trying to do this for the first time you know and I, uh, those who want to continue this please join and we can we can pick up a whole bunch of discussions on on discord and uh, aditi you are taking down the phone numbers and everything uh, yes yes okay, good 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 okay so any 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 uh, those who have not spoken at all I, i'm glad we, you know this is this is good uh, turnout you know and uh, since we are meeting after such a long time i didn't know how many of them how many of the students would join in and where you guys are and it is so nice to hear you know all these stories from different folks uh, and so let's stay in touch and uh, build this group and if you feel there are others who would uh, want to be part of this you know just connect them and let's build a larger group of mentors who could make a difference you know we, we all came from you know I, several of you have been to my house in my village question is when you look back how the hell did you get from that place to where you are right now it is because of whole bunch of mentors who kind of pushed you one direction or the other and you you were like a you know leaf in the wind but just got directed by a lot of other folks who uh, pushed you in the right direction question is how do you make that difference ourselves to the next generation you know so any any parting thoughts I, I think being a part of that workshop was really amplifying um, because you could sh see the passion in the diverse community and how it extended all the opportunities for the career evaluation and everything. Um, sorry, elevation and everything. So I think that was sort of like a trigger point for everybody with their journeys. So that connection that we built by meeting each other okay, and learning wonderful. from each other. This is, this is really really moving for me to hear stories from all of you you know you know none of this was done to with any kind of ideas like this you know it was done to hey this is what i believed in uh, and uh, you know even after running companies for 20 years uh, question is how do you give pay forward you know and that's what you are trying to do okay so with that i think we should continue this discussion we will create a we will on the discord group and uh, we'll pick up uh, the discussion from here uh, or if you want to be on whatsapp we will figure out i think are you all on discord if not please please be okay because that's the platform of choice it looks like so uh, we should actually continue this discussion online okay yeah thank you so much for like conducting this it was wonderful <laughs> No, 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 this is this is absolutely my pleasure. You know, so so glad to hear from all of you. You know, so we're looking forward to you know. Let's let's stay connected. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah, so thank much. you, yeah. everyone. It was really nice uh, listening to everyone and their journeys. Yeah, thank you thank all. You. Thank, thank you all. Yeah, thank bye you bye. All. See you all on Discord. Yeah, see you on Discord, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rajesh, do you want to stop recording? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, let me see. I just won't do that. <laughs> so, okay, I should stop sharing first, and then I can stop recording. Okay.